I make a joke about the foot long bok choy, okay? Bok choy was not grown to be this big, all right? Bok choy is grown to be about yay big. All right, because when it's this big, it doesn't taste very good. It's fibrous, it's chewy, you can't chew through it, it's terrible, right? But when it's this big, it's fantastically crisp, non-fibrous. I don't want someone's interpretation of what Asian greens is or what a bok choy is to them, and they sell it and nobody buys it. No one is servicing the Asian American market. We wanted to grow something different. Oh, this is so much fun. Hi, my name is Judy. I'm founder of All Well Greens, an indoor vertical farm growing Asian greens in Queens, New York. Okay. Uh, my shot. <laughs> <laughs> this is my time. John is my husband and co-founder. And we are the first uh, indoor vertical farm to grow Asian greens. And part of our process is harvesting. So right now, uh, the grow is ready to be harvested. You see the really nice bulb over here that it's forming. And we want it as a petite size rather than a full size. So that's a perfect specimen. So this is Shanghai bok choy and we're utilizing 98% of what we're, we're cutting. So there isn't a lot of waste. When we began All Well Greens, we were really looking for a way to modernize the production of Asian greens. We saw the produce market move towards pesticide-free, organic, pre-packaged produce. Something that lasts longer, something that is versatile. You can eat it as a salad, you can eat it cooked. It's convenient. So this bulb, Look at the interiors, there is no dirt, there is no grime, it's really clean. Oh, these are bigger now. This is my baby. In Chinese supermarkets, you don't see pesticide-free bok choy. So if you go into your H-marts, your 99 Ranch, your Qingsan, all the Chinese supermarkets and Asian supermarkets, there was no such offering for Asian greens. The growers are not providing that type of product. Really what we've kind of set up here is a laboratory. So we're trying to grow and, and bed down the growing process for as many of our crops as we can before we move into a larger space to kind of produce them at full scale. So we do a lot of research in here. We do a lot of experimentation. Uh, these systems are, are, um, are systems that we built. They're kind of, uh, they're not from a kit. They're, they're sort of DIY. Uh, we've got a couple of different plumbing systems we're working with. We use these racks to test different lighting systems, as well as things like planting density, temperatures. We've planted over a thousand batches in this space. Uh, this is Uchoi seed, Uchoi being one of our core products. So we've, we've grown a lot in here in the last year and a half since we started really getting, digging deep into the process. How are we looking at here? Uh, we've got some Thai basil here. So this is one of our first initial grows for this. Uh, but we're doing some herbs. We're testing a few different types of herbs. Now, a lot of this stuff hasn't really been tried in this context before, and uh, we get to be the first ones to do it. It used to take 35 to 40 days in the field, right? For us, we grow it in half that time. Um, so just finding the right blend of uh, growing mediums here. You want to provide that structure for that seed to grow in. You want to provide access to nutrients. The whole idea here was to really, really understand if we could actually grow uh, a product that was commercially viable. You know, as the size of farm that we're building out, this is going to be a good, this is a good starting point for us. So right now we're building a 5,000 square foot uh, or vertical farm in Queens, New York. This is something that we see that's long past overdue. We wanted to provide that option for everybody out there. I'm really spoiled because I've always had access to Asian produce. My parents owned a wholesale produce business that I grew up in. Our background and our my family um, wholesale business bring, gives us an advantage. 
There's no searching for, oh, uh, who am I gonna sell my stuff to? This is my mom, Mary. She uh, founded this business back in 1987. Seven. And um, this is where I grew up. I spent uh, some of my weekends here culling through vegetables unwillingly. You know, learned a lot though. <laughs> when it's cold, um, it affects the vegetable and so we have to cull through. Usually, we don't have a this one that's a flat, flat top the cabbage. And this variety is from Japan and Taiwan. Very tender and very sweet. Back in the early 90s, there was no dou miao. Dou miao is uh, pea tips. My mother contracted a grower in California to start a program to grow pea tips. Okay, now that went from like 10 acres of pea tips to hectare acres of pea tips. From pea tips, they grew Chinese celery. American celery is solid inside, but over here, the stems are hollow. So at one point, there was no Chinese celery in the US market. So, you know, she taught them everything that they needed to know to grow a certain uh, crop, and then we would wholesale it for them. A nice quality they started seeing, okay, the market is missing this, and the market is missing that. Her invoices went from, you know, 50 items from like scallion, ginger, garlic, broccoli, to 100 to 300 offerings. All these things that were not available are now available because of her building a farm program, you know, from California, Mexico, South Carolina, New Jersey, Canada, you know, to provide vegetables all year round for the New York Asian American. <laughs> you see the happy look I on her face? See the happy look on her face? It's like, I love the vegetable and uh, I try to teach my two kids, my daughter, how to know the quality and how to cook. And I love it because I love to eat. <laughs> because I grew up with a mom who has a green thumb, it's implicitly expected that I have a green thumb too. When I showed my mom what I wanted to do, she, you know, she saw the vision with me. You know, she was like, oh, this can be fantastic. You know, this could be something really, really awesome. It, it's, you know, carrying on my parents' uh, business or inspiration from their business and, you know, bringing it on to ours. You know, there's so many things you can do with them. You can roast them, you can uh, barbecue them, you can stir fry, you can uh, steam, boil, whatever. For me, if it's a little undercooked, it's okay as long as it's crunchy. Um, most people uh, overcook their greens. I'm gonna taste one. A lot of what we grow is not only for the Chinese community, you know, it's for the Korean, it's for the Japanese, it's for the Indian, it's for the Southeast Asian. There's a lot of crossover that every culture eats at one point or another. As a baby green, you can pick it up and eat it in one bite, which is fantastic. One of the interesting things about this is, is not only learning new uh, dishes in the Asian tradition, it's also learning to use these greens in the kind of more Western tradition that I'm used to. Being in the pre-pack, it's less contaminants, clean, and it keeps the product longer. It smells good. We're gonna hit the ground running. All our testing for our first six products are already done. We hope that it changes the world and it changes the produce and it changes uh, people's eating habits. There's 22 million Asian Americans in the United States. Each one of us wants to be heard. Delicious. What did you forget? We didn't add salt. <laughs>